I woke up. I don't know how many hours later with the light streaming through the windows. It had finally reached the sofa where I was lying and touched my face. I couldn't remember where I was. No, I was at home. No, not my old childhood bedroom. This had been my apartment for nearly seven years. Then why wasn't I in my own bed? Why did I remember sleeping on a floor? No, that had been a dream. No, a nightmare. Don't think about it. Don't think about it. And at the same time, I knew I had overslept and should have been down at the coffee house hours ago and Charlie would kill me. No, he wouldn't. Why hadn't one of them called to find out where I was? I tried to sit up and nearly screamed. Every muscle in my body seemed to have seized up, and I didn't think there was a single nerve end that hadn't shouted no when I moved. I ached all over, inside and out, and furthermore, I felt, I felt as if all my insides, the organs, the organ systems, all that stuff you studied in biology class and promptly forgot again, all those murky, semi-known bits and pieces no longer had the same relationship to each other that they had before before silly sort of thing to feel i must be delirious my mind would keep drifting back don't think about it but how was i to make sense of where i was at home sleeping on the sofa in broad daylight and so sore i couldn't move if all that was a nightmare what had happened to me i tried to sit up again and eventually succeeded there was a blanket laid over me and it fell off and onto the floor I was wearing a filthy stained dark cranberry red dress that clung round me at the top and swirled out into yards and yards of him at my ankles. I was barefoot and my feet were in shreds, scratched and abraded and bruised and swollen. I had mud all over me and now all over the sofa and the floor as well, and a long curved ugly slash across my breast that had obviously blood and then clotted. Its edges ground against each other and throbbed when I tried to move. My lower lip was split and that side of my face felt puffy. I started to shiver uncontrollably. Painfully, I picked up the blanket again and wrapped it round me and made my way into the bathroom by feeling along the walls and turned the hot water on in the bath. The hot water was going to hurt, but it was going to be worth it. I poured in about four times as much bubble bath as I usually use and breathed the sweet lily of the valley scented steam. Even my lungs hurt and my breathing seemed funny. There was something about the way I breathed that was different from. While I waited for the bath to fill, I groped my way into the kitchen. I ate an apple because that was the first thing I saw. There was an empty carton of milk on the counter by the sink. I didn't think about this. I ate another apple, then I ate a pear. I moved into the light pouring through the kitchen window and let it soak into me while I stood staring out at the garden. In the welcoming, restorative sunlight, trying to keep my mind from thinking anything at all, I felt the tiny, laborious stirring of a sense of well-being, the convalescence rejoicing at the first hint of a possible return to health. I would have a bath, and then I would call a coffee house. I didn't have to tell anyone anything. I could be too traumatized. I could have forgotten everything. I had forgotten everything. I was forgetting everything right now. My feet and my face and the gash on my breast would stop anyone from pressing me too hard to remember something so obviously terrible. Yolandi must be out, otherwise she would have heard the bath water running and have come upstairs to find out if I was all right. She would have known that I've been missing, that on a normal day I would have been at the coffee house hours ago, not up here running bath water, that I've been missing, that I've been... I didn't have to remember or think about anything. I could just stand here and let the sun heal me. I was relieved that Yolandi wasn't here asking questions, being appalled and sickened, reminding me by her distress. I was relieved that no one would disturb me till I had finished forgetting. The bath should be full by now. Now that the sunlight had begun to do its work, I wanted to be clean. I might have to use every bar of soap I had and bring the scouring pads in from the kitchen. I was going to burn this dress, wherever it came from. It was nothing I'd have ever chosen. I couldn't imagine why I was wearing it. When I was completely clean again and wearing my own clothes, I would call the coffee house, tell them I was home again, home and safe, safe. As I turned away from the window, a square of white lying on the kitchen table caught my eye. It was my notepad, which usually lived beside the phone. On it was written, Goodbye, my sunshine, Constantine. And that is the end of part one.